There's this really cool thing, Pinterest predicts. Pinterest puts it out every week and it comes in the form of a mini slide share presentation. There's no talking, it's just eight to 10 slides of what they're predicting will trend in the search during that particular time. A couple of months ago, I wanna say it was even six to eight months ago, we started sharing it in our weekly newsletter, Pinterest Made Simple. And we got so much feedback from people that this was helping them plan what they were gonna either include in their descriptions or what type of content they were going to create. So we figured why not do a video about what Pinterest predicts is and how and why you should use it. I am Kate All from Simple Pin Media. We're a Pinterest marketing and management agency. Our goal is to help you be more successful with Pinterest so that your business can grow using Pinterest. These videos are all about how to empower you and enable you to take it in one small step so that you don't get overwhelmed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So why do you even wanna pay attention to Pinterest predicts? One, because it's talking about trends. Pinterest is a very trendy platform. What that means is that during certain times of the year, things on Pinterest get higher and then they get lower in search volume. Christmas is a great example. It starts trending in July, goes all the way through to December, and it has various topics within it, various keywords. So holidays are an, a thing that trends. You can also have certain events where you'll see more engagement with it and then times when you'll see less. If you are harnessing the power of trends and you're getting in front of them before they happen, you have a greater chance to engage with the end user. So we leverage the predicts because we know that it's gonna get a greater form of engagement for the pins that we're creating. Number two, this is why you also need to use Pinterest predicts. People on Pinterest go to the platform ready to buy. So when they open up their app, they're thinking, what can I find? What can I purchase? What can I dream into? And so when you're hitting them right where they're searching, you have a greater chance to hit them in their buying journey. 78% of pinners use Pinterest weekly to make decisions. And so it's really important that you're hitting them in that decision-making time. Pinterest predicts to they say that these predictions are 80% more likely to get engagement and they last 50% longer. Now it's from Pinterest, so of course they're gonna toot their own horn, but we wanna look at that information and again, look at is the pinner searching for something in particular that matches the product that we have or the content that we have. When those two things align, it makes for really great forward movement with your Pinterest strategy. It's not like you're swimming upstream anymore, but you're working with the current. So it's a really good idea to pay attention to Pinterest predicts weekly. Real quick pause here. If you're even wondering what Pinterest predicts is and you're like, hey, I have no idea. I'm gonna link up here to a video that we've done so you can kind of get a general overview of what it is. But I also wanna say that the Pinterest predicts weekly shows up in the Pinterest business community and frankly, it's really hard to find. So if you want it quick and easy, sign up for our Pinterest Made Simple newsletter below. It comes out every Wednesday and we will often link to that in the newsletter so you can grab it super easy. All right, so here is are some basic tips for how to implement a strategy with a Pinterest predicts. So let's say you're a fashion blogger and the whole eclectic grandpa is taken off and you're trying to figure out a way to really jump on that. So then what I would do is use those words and use that style in a lot of your images. Western Gothic is another one. If you're a home decor content creator, you can infuse that into what you're talking about or there's Tropic Like It's Hot if you are a food creator. So yes, these are kind of kitschy names, but there are subtopics underneath these main topics that have more strategic keywords that you can use. So think about the fact that Pinterest is saying, hey, during this time, this will trend higher. 
okay, I'm going to create content that's going to match the higher trend. So I just mentioned it, but you wanna to get to know the data behind the trends. So what that means is Tropic Like It's Hot might have pineapple or coconut or papaya. You wanna leverage those specific keywords in your pin title, in your pin description. You can even get crazy and create a new board around these topics too as well. The most important part is that you want to make sure that you are matching keywords with the trend, with the content, and it makes sense for you. Don't just create content just because Pinterest said it's going to trend higher. Create content because you really think that your end user would like it and you know they might really jam out on pineapple. Make, the, make sure those kind of match together and you're not just appealing to the Pinterest algorithm. Number three. Okay, I talked about this a lot recently at a conference and I think oftentimes we create something that we feel like is evergreen. It's just going to be there forever. So let's say it's cinnamon rolls, right? Cinnamon rolls can be great in the summer, the winter, the spring, the fall. Anybody can have them anytime. But if you start to create Pinterest images that cater towards the trend, or maybe they have an Easter theme, or maybe you make your cinnamon rolls and it has a Mother's Day theme, what you're doing is you're angling your current recipes towards a trend that Pinterest is talking about without having to recreate the cinnamon rolls. You're now creating a whole pin Maybe it has some of those elements on the pin image, and then you can add those keywords into your pin title and your pin description, but you're maximizing something that's evergreen for a trend without having to do extra work. I think this is really important for people to realize, and I don't think people are really leveraging this enough. So look to take your evergreen content and make it a little bit more seasonal. The last thing you wanna consider is measuring and optimizing your content. So let's say you're going to create something around grandpa core content or eclectic grandpa and you want to create a blog post and you have some affiliate links in it that go to things that look very grandpa-y. So look at that, create a new Pinterest image. Well, you're gonna have to create a Pinterest image for it because it's a brand new post. You're gonna create a new Pinterest image. I might even recommend two to three and then see how those performed. Did they get more engagement because they were a search trend that Pinterest predicted or did they fall flat? Do you need to try a new image? Don't just put something out there once and attach these Pinterest predicts keywords to it and kind of hope for the best, but test out a few different things. Another example is in the home decor space. You can do like a Western brand makeover or something like that. So if you are dry with content ideas, Pinterest predicts weekly is going to infuse your creativity with lots of different, different ideas that can not only help you with your content calendar, but can also help you serve the end user on Pinterest. All right, so I want you to go watch the Pinterest predicts video. I want you to have a full understanding of how it works so that you can take the strategies I've talked about in this video and you have a complete understanding of the big parent Pinterest predicts and the Pinterest predicts weekly and how they can work together.